This system is so useful, so helpful in a band setting. Um, I've used it for many years and I can't imagine not having used it. Um, if you're curious what, when a musician yells out, hey, go to the four, go to the five, go to the six, what does that mean? Uh, I want to get into how you can understand that in an easy way, but instead of showing it to you on guitar, I want to show it to you on piano. So the reason I want to teach you this number system on piano versus guitar is because guitar is a bit tricky with you know each string, uh, it changes after about five frets, you go up to the next one. Right? So it gets a little bit tricky trying to think of all this in the context of a vertical row of strings, whereas piano, it's laid out linearly, right? So if we got all these in a row, it's a little bit easier to see it from left to right and understand, okay, we're going from one to seven, right? So piano, I started out taking piano lessons before I even hopped on guitar, and uh, I really benefited from that because with piano, you learn the grand staff, you learn theory a little bit more easily, and so that's why I wanna get into this today on the piano. So I wanna start off this discussion with a very popular chord progression that you've probably heard of before, uh, the two, five, one. It's really popular in jazz, it's really popular in any genre, um, and it's one of those chord progressions that we just love as human beings for some reason. It just feels good. So what does that mean? What does two, five, one mean? Okay, so maybe let's hop over to the piano here, and let's take an easy key like C, for instance, right? So we're in the key of C, we got, that's our, that's our scale right there for C major. So if we know that scale, which is just all the white keys, pretty easy, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Let's count those out. So if we've got C, which is our one, we've got C, right? So that's our one. D is our two. Three is E. Four is F. Five is G. Six is A. Seven is B. And C is one. You wouldn't call it eight, you'd call it back to one. So this is a great easy key to kind of visualize how this system works because it's all white keys, it's all simple, there's no sharps, no flats. Um, so now that we know that we can number out those notes in the scale, we can take that information of two, five, one, and we can go, okay, so the two of C, that is D, and then G, and then one, C, right? So again, if we kind of work that through, we've got C is one, D is two, keep counting up, three, four, five, that's our G, right? And we go back to one, that's C. So what does that mean? It means D, G, C. And in a major scale, you're gonna have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So you're gonna have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. That's just a principle of music, you can kind of study that on your own time. So essentially what that means, if we're in a major key, you're gonna have your two is gonna be minor, so that's gonna be a D minor chord, and then your five is always gonna be major, so you're gonna have G major, and then C, one is gonna be major as well. So you're gonna have a D minor, G major, C major. So that's what two, five, one means in the key of C. Okay, so let's take another key, for example. Let's say D major, right? So the scale for D major is gonna be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. One more time, it's gonna be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Um, this is where you're now realizing why it's important to know piano to understand uh, this system, because if you know all these scales on piano, then it makes it easier to understand what's going on from a linear standpoint and just thinking of it as notes on the piano. So. If we go from this scale, what's our two, five, one gonna be? So that's gonna be D is our one, E is gonna be our two, F sharp's our three, G is our four, A is our five, B is our six, C sharp is our seven, D is our root again. So two, five, one, what does that mean? That means an E minor, right? Our five is what, A, okay, and then one is D. So that's gonna be two, five, one in the key of D. Okay, last time with this two, five, one, let's see if we can find that in key of E. So um, the scale for E major uh, is gonna be E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, right? One more time, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So how can we find that? So our two in key of E is gonna be F sharp, our five is gonna be B, right? Our one is gonna be E, 
And again, let's remember that major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major principle, if we're in a major key, uh, that's what every single one of those notes in that scale has to be when it becomes a chord uh, for that to sound right in that key. So that's going to mean E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A major, B major, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished, and then E, right? So what is that going to be? In the 251 of E major, that's going to be F sharp minor, B major, E, right? F sharp minor, B major, E, and that's 251 in the key of E. Okay, so let's try a different example. What if we tried a progression that you've probably heard of as well, 1, 6, 4, 5? What if we tried that in the key of G? So let's go back over to piano here. We know that our G major scale, uh, if you've done some studying, G major scale is going to be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So that's our G major scale. One more time, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And we know our principle of a major scale is always going to consist of major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So what's that going to mean in the key of G? That's going to mean 1, 6, 4, 5, right? You see how we're landing there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So that's going to mean G major, E minor, C major, D major, G major. Okay, so let's try to find a 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A flat. So A flat major scale is going to be A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. One more time, it's going to be A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, right? So in our principle of major scale of being uh, 1 being the major chord, 2 being the minor chord, 3 being the minor chord, 4 being the major chord, 5 being the major chord, 6 being the minor chord, 7 being the diminished chord, and back to the root major chord. That's going to mean a 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A flat, if you do the math, is going to be A flat major, right? That's going to be F is our 6, so that's going to be our minor, right? F minor. What's our 4? Our 4 is D flat, so it's going to be D flat major. And then our 5 is E flat, so it's going to be E flat major. So that is 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A flat. Okay, lastly, I want to try this 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A now. But if you've got a piano next to you, I want you to try it before I give you the answer. I'm going to give you a couple seconds to try and figure it out. Let's try and find that 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A, okay? So to get you started, if you don't know the A major scale on piano, that's going to be A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Right? One more time. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Okay. So now knowing that, and we know that our principle of the major scale is going to mean that the chords in that scale are going to be what? They're going to be, the one is going to be a major, the two is going to be a minor, the three is going to be a minor, four is going to be major, hopefully you're tracking along, the five is going to be a major, the six is going to be a minor, the seven is going to be a diminished, and then the one is going to be major again. So from there, we can figure out then that a 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A is going to be what? I'm going to play through the scale real quick, give you a second to think about it, and then you see if you can figure it out on your own. So we've got A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So what's that going to mean? That's going to mean 1 is obviously A major, we know that. 6 minor is going to be what? F sharp minor. 4 is going to be what? D major, because that's the 4. 4 is always major in the major key. And then the 5 is going to be what? E. E major, right? So that's going to give us our 1, 6, 4, 5 in the key of A. All right, so now that we understand that from a piano standpoint, which again, I can't stress that enough, if you can get some piano lessons, it will add so much to your musicianship. I would encourage you to do that if you can, and then move on to the guitar. I know that's kind of hard for some people, but it has benefited me so much understanding this instrument right here. But let's move that to guitar. So what were we doing originally? We were doing a 2-5-1 in C, right? Okay, so let's use some of those funky chords we were doing on day one. Uh, we learned, you know, we were in D major on day one. Let's move that to C for now, like we were talking. So if we C major seven, so if that's our one, what's our two? Our two is going to be, if we go back over here, C, D, 
That's our two, right? So we know that D is gonna be our, our minor. What if instead of doing our D minor seven, what if we made that uh, minor nine? So what if that's in a two, five, one? What if, what if this is that first chord, two minor, nine, two minor nine? Now a five, what's that gonna be in key of C? Let's go back over to here to the piano so we can see it easily, no pun intended. C is one, D is two, E is three, four is F, five is G. So that's gonna mean that the next chord in a two, five, one is gonna be G. So we could just do a G major, but what if we make that a little bit more interesting? What if we do, what if we make that a four over five chord? So what does that four over five mean? Okay, so what is the four of C? One, two, three, four, that's F. So a four over five means, man, we're doing some algebra right here, okay? Four over five is gonna be F over G, which is this chord right here. Okay, so that's the second chord in that two, five, one, right? So two, five, one. And let's make that a major seven, one. So put that all together. This is a two, five, one in the key of C. So that's a two, five, one on guitar in the key of C. Okay, again, that one, six, four, five that we were talking about earlier, let's try and bring that over to guitar. So we ended off that discussion with uh, key of A. So let's bring that over to guitar in key of A as well, right? So we've got A here. This is our A major E shape. We learned this shape in day one, right? It's a cool way to play that. Um, you can also play A the original way here. But for this exercise, I kind of want you to get in the habit of trying a new shape. If you haven't seen this before, um, this is a good thing to you know, kind of get used to doing. Because it gets involved the other things that we've been talking about, which is muting. And to me, it sounds a little bit more funky. And if you're taking this course to learn funk guitar, maybe try this chord. Or you can try it up here. Kind of thing. So, back to one, six, four, five, and key of A. What does that mean? One is gonna be A, obviously, right? So let's go back over to piano and make sure we figure this out. One is A, two is B, three is C sharp, four is D, five is E, six is F sharp, seven is G sharp, one, or eight root, one is A. Don't ever call it eight, you'll get laughed at, but just to help you understand what's going on. Eight means one, but never call it eight. Um, so back to one, six, four, five, and key of A on guitar, that's gonna mean one, A major. Six minor is gonna be F sharp minor. Four is gonna be D major, right? Five is gonna be E major, right? So that's what that means. cool right there. That's a change that we can make to that four over five to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, again, that four over five, if we know that we're in the key of A, our four of A, like we said, is D. So, and, and the five is also E. So if we hear that we want a four over five in the key of A, we know that, okay, that must be D over E. So that's a four over five in uh, the key of A. So if we put that all together and we say, maybe we do a one, six, four to four over five, that's gonna sound like this. So that's one, six, four, four over five in the key of A. So that's a brief overview of the number system. The traditional Nashville number system is a little bit more complex, but I'm not getting into all the specifics of that today. I just want to communicate the basics of how to think of chords as numbers, uh, because when you're in a band setting and, and say you transpose, you can already see uh, how it's a benefit to a band when say you're in the key of A and then you want to move up to you know, A sharp but uh, you don't wanna to have to you know, rewrite all the chords. You can just think of them as numbers, and if you've memorized all the keys, then you don't have to think of A versus A sharp. You just still think, oh, one, six, four, five, and I just move it up half step. Um, so that's the benefit of this system. It's not the perfect system for every scenario. For instance, jazz gets a little bit wonky. There's a lot of movement, a lot of key changes, and so it doesn't make sense to think, okay, what key are we in, and now what number is this? 
Um, I don't really think jazz players think of that in that way. Um, they do think in, you know, 2 5 1, and then maybe you, you might hear this quite a bit like a. Uh, Much more beyond that, I don't think the number system is a great application for jazz when you're moving around a ton, right? That's when you just have a knowledge of the fretboard and of the keys and how they work together and uh, you don't really think of it in a mathematical standpoint. A lot of people um, kind of dog on the number system for being too mathematical. I've heard some musicians say that. Uh, but in the context where it is um, helpful, it is a great system to use and it can really help changing keys and uh, communicating amongst musicians really easy and really efficient. If you're interested in taking your guitar playing to the next level, check out Pick Up Music. We have hundreds of lessons from the world's top guitar players. It's the best way to get to the next level, especially if you're an intermediate player. There's a 14-day free trial, so you can start free, try it out, and let us know what you think.